Hello, welcome or welcome back. My name is Ari, and today I want to talk about new releases that I have read recently and if you should add these to your TBR. The first two books I want to talk about are short story collections, specifically horror short story collections, uh, because we're we're almost to spooky season, so maybe you need to read some of these during the spookiest time of year. First up, I'm going to talk about Spin a Black Yarn by Josh Mallerman. This is a short story collection of five stories by Josh Mallerman, um, just general short horror stories. If you're not familiar with Josh Mallerman, he's the uh, guy who did Bird Box. Um, he wrote the original story that the television show with Sandra Bullock was based off of. So a little bit of a little bit more context there. Uh, but like I said, this is just a short story collection by him. The stories don't really have anything to do with each other um, other than they're telling a story. So spin a yarn is to tell a story and to spin a black yarn would be to tell like a dark story. Um, I think it's also in one of the stories it's related to like creating a noose if that tells you anything about what's going on in here. Uh, this is definitely, like many horror collections, something you should look up trigger warnings or content warnings if you need them, uh, just because a lot of it is, is dark. <laughs> it's supposed to be dark. So as far as this goes, this was fine. I think I ended up giving it a three star. Maybe if you like Josh Mallerman, this is definitely something you should pick up if you're like missing out on his full-length novels, you've read everything and you just want to continue reading from him, pick this up. But if you were like not a Josh Mallerman fan or maybe new to the horror genre, I don't know that this is what I would recommend as a starting place. Out of the five stories, the first story, uh, Half the House is Haunted, was the one that I rated highest. I gave it a four star. I liked the story but I didn't like the stream of consciousness writing style uh, of this story. From there it just kind of kept going down. Um, the next three, Argyle, Doug and Judy by The House Washer and The Jupiter Drop, all got three stars. Um, while I didn't care for the story of The Jupiter Drop, I really really liked the premise and now I want to take a trip to Jupiter even though I know it's not possible and it's supposed to be a horror story and I wasn't scared I was like ooh I want to do that um, and then the very last story which is the longest story is like a, a novella instead of a short story was uh, Ergarov I think is how you say it and I hated that story <laughs> so much. This one is kind of up in the air. It wasn't the worst thing I've ever read. It wasn't the best thing I read. If you like Josh Allerman and this sounds interesting to you, definitely pick it up. Uh, if it doesn't, then you can easily skip this one. The other short story collection I read this month was Night of the Living Queers. This is 13 short stories by various queer horror authors. Uh, I believe even queer POC horror authors. This one is a lot less gruesome horror. This feels more like a uh, horror aimed towards like young adults, uh, teenagers. This is a lot more like scary stories you read in the dark with a queer framework around it. Um, it's spooky urban legends, something you would tell around a campfire, but not like body horror or super disturbing or violent. I mean it, violent but not as violent as it possibly could be. There's not a whole lot of gore in here. Uh, there, are, Though there are like dark topics. So for this one if you like spooky stories but don't really like extreme horror I would definitely recommend this. Um, if you like campfire tales, like this is the way to go. I thought it was very cute. I thought it was a little young for me personally, but that is based off of like my enjoyment of, you know, horror and what I look for personally in horror. My favorite story in this collection was a story about an eldritch god named Bob who haunts a food court. 
and accept sacrifices in the form of leftover Sabaro pizza. So uh, a, a lot lighter kind of stories in here. This is a good introduction to a lot of queer horror authors if that is something else you're looking for. And overall, if this is your vibe, I definitely recommend it. If this is not your vibe, then it's, it's not your vibe. Why are you picking it up in the first place? After those two horror samplings, I am going to switch over to fantasy, and we're going to talk about uh, Los Warrior by R.A. Salvador. This is the conclusion to the Way of the Drow trilogy, and it definitely leaves room for more Dritz books to come down the line. Uh, I'm not going to talk about this very much because this is like... 40 or so books into like the Dritz universe. So if you're not familiar with it <laughs> or familiar with him, uh, this is this series in and of itself is not going to mean anything to you. Basically what this does is addresses the racism around like drow as a race in and of itself in D&D. Drow don't necessarily look like people of African descent or dark-skinned people, but in the original D&D universe, people with dark skin are evil and people with light skin are good. So while Drow don't necessarily represent black people, the comparison is still very, very easy to make. This kind of addresses that just because you have dark skin doesn't mean you're evil. And it's... R.A. Salvatore's way of working within the world to combat the historical racism of a game created in the 1970s. Which I found interesting. I thought the story was interesting. If you're a Dritz fan, you should definitely be continuing on with wherever you left off in the Dritz books. Uh, the more modern stories are very cool, uh, very interesting. I don't know what else to tell you, but uh, let's move on to the other fantasy that I read, which was Labyrinth's Heart by M.A. Carrick. So this is the third book in the Rook and Rose series. Uh, let me grab the first book really quick. The series is made up of Mask of Mirrors, The Liar's Knot, and then the conclusion to the series is what I just read, Labyrinth's Heart. Now this series follows mainly a young woman named Rin. Rin shows up to the city with a plan to pose as a long lost daughter of a noble family and basically scam the hell out of them. She's trying to uh, scam them for enough money to support her and her sister uh, who grew up like poor street urchins, right? Throughout the series we follow her and her gray morality. Like she sets out to pull off this scam but maybe ends up saving the city in the process. Uh, this is a fairly complicated political fantasy. So if you like political fantasies, I definitely 100% recommend this series um, with just, you know, a scam artist twist, which I know a lot of people like. If you like Six of Crows and you want a something more adult, definitely check this out. The magic system in here I thought was super cool. There are a couple of different kinds of magic, depending on the, you know, like, race, I guess. <laughs> That's not the right word, but it's the word I'm going to use. But, uh, like, the ancestry of the characters in here can practice different types of magic. So there's one magic, I don't remember what these called, they're all, like, Italian words that I will just butcher. But one kind of magic is based off of like astrology and numbers. You could do magic based off of like drawing geometric shapes and then predict somebody's future based off like star charts and things like that from their birth. Uh, additionally, there's another type of magic that's kind of based off of tarot cards, which I thought was very cool. Um, and it's like real magic with a real outcome uh, instead of just, you know, like predicting futures and then interpreting things based off of those futures. There's like actual like magic in these books. So if you're a tarot or astrology person, you'll probably like this. Uh, if you like political fantasy, you will definitely like this. If you like uh, heist or con artist, you'll probably like this. It, if you like big 
thick, thick fantasy series that only go to three books and that are completely done. Nothing more is coming out in this series. You will probably like this. Uh, I enjoyed it, gave it four stars. The final book that I want to talk about today is Thornhenge by T. Kingfisher. This is a very, very short story uh, that is a retelling of like Sleeping Beauty, I guess. I think T. Kingfisher does just an absolutely amazing job with fairy tale retellings. Um, this basically asks, like, yes, there's a princess trapped in a tower for hundreds of years, and there is a thorn hedge that has grown up around the tower, making it impossible for princes and knights to go in and rescue this young, beautiful princess. But what if there's a really, really good reason that she is trapped asleep to this tower, and maybe you shouldn't go free her? Maybe that's a really bad idea. Very short story, very cute short story, a, a lovely twist on a fairy tale. The only thing that I didn't like about this is I thought it was too short, which I rarely ever say. Most of the time I love really short books, and I did give this a four star, I did love this, but I wanted more to this story. Like I want more time with our main character in here. Uh, so there you go. Highly recommend definitely pick this up. It'll take you just a few short hours to read and it's definitely worth your time. But those were all of the new releases that I read this month. Maybe you'll find something in there that you want to read and I will see you next week for another video. Bye!